Hi, everybody. My name is Timothy Trespass, and I am still a targeted individual. After awaking from a restless, fitful sleep, throwing up almost horrible, painful illness, I awake to my wonderful lover and wife going on and on about all the horrible stuff they've done and all the horrible stuff they do and all the horrible bits. It's the same thing I do. <laughs> Except she's talking to the voices in her head, trying to convince them that they're wrong, that they're bad, and that what they've done is, is reprehensible, immoral, criminal. It needs to be stopped. You know, and uh, and to me, just waking up, it sounds just more like another bitter tirade of, and, and you know, when she's sitting there talking like that, out loud, and waving her arms around, and, you know, like I'm doing here, she's doing all the time, and sometimes it makes me insane. What is my problem? I should be right there with her, going and waving my arms around. But, uh, yeah, I know, it's all part of this mind control shit. They're trying to break our love apart. They're trying to turn it into dust, like they did the World Trade Center. Like they're doing to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Like they're doing to my body. And hers. So, I'm looking at this eviction notice, and I'm reading it, and I'm thinking about this, and... I really don't think we have a legal standing to be here. You know, we can try the, uh... The deeply interdependent financial relationship, and that's why we should have the lease, um, succession rights, which they're going to deny. Uh, you know, the other thing I want to say is maybe I'm an idiot. I'm supposed to be visualizing positive outcomes, but all I can come up with is what I know to be fucking reality from my 47 years of being a targeted individual. <laughs> I got that voice in my head that they put in there that says, you're a bad person, you're a piece of shit, you're never going to be anything, you're never going to be anyone, you don't deserve anything, now go to fucking jail, go to the street and die, you piece of shit. That's the voice I got inside my head. And I internalized it. I took that thing that those people were telling me my whole freaking life, and I put it inside my own head. And now I get to listen to it night and day, thinking sometimes that it's me. That that voice is me. Luckily, luckily, there's still an inkling of knowledge and understanding left, and I recognize it on occasion, usually after I've said the horrible thing, um, that, wait a minute, who is this voice? This is not me. This is not who I was meant to be. This is not what I was put here for. This is why I was created to be a piece of shit. To deserve nothing. To believe this stuff about myself. You know, come on. Anyway. You know, this positive outcome thing. Yes, I want to visualize a positive outcome. Um, this experience is horrible, it's been horrible. And at least I can still crack a smile at it for a moment. Um, we're going to court on Friday. I have a pretty good idea what the judge is going to say. Our defense is going to be, look, they did all this horrible stuff to us.
cost us all this money. That's why we couldn't get out faster. We actually had two places to go, and all this crap they did to us cost us in those two places. Uh, and we spent all this money. Now we barely have enough money. We just, you know, maybe got a promise of a little more money, and we're looking for a place like Mad. Please have mercy on us, just like all the other poor people in Bushwick who are being pushed out of their $800 a month homes to have to rent $800 a month single rooms. Um, and uh, please give us a little time, you know. Uh, this landlord is, is a greedy profiteer and putting people in the street is wrong. Uh, please balance our rights as human beings to exist with his right as a greedy profiteer to make as much money as humanly possible off those people who are stupid enough to pay it. However, you know, this is um, like a fucking bulldozer, this shit, you know? When these cocksuckers want to roll over you, they roll over you. And you best get the fuck out of the way, is what I've learned. But there's that voice in my head again, you know? Uh, would I have been that guy in Tiananmen Square who fucking sat down in front of the tank and said, go ahead and run my ass over, motherfucker? Probably not. But... I'd like to think I would. Anyway, you know, I flipped out. I flipped out this morning. I started banging on this metal plate because it was the loudest possible fucking thing I could find. And, you know, I really wanted to, like, somehow bring you people the reality of what it's like to be a targeted individual and not just my complaining about what it's like to be a targeted individual, you know, but uh, because of this insanity and that losing all the stuff we lost and all the cameras and you know recorders and all the other shit I had it's just uh, me talking into the phone basically uh, and uh, whatever little secret footage I gather um, you know but I don't know I just I, I don't know don't watch TV people don't watch television. Tell your friends, don't let their children watch television. Don't watch it. It's full of crap. If when I, I've done this study, okay, I've looked back at everything that I've watched as a small child. Look at this little guy. Oh, he's like, oh, beautiful man. Yes, you beautiful guy. Yeah. Ooh, he's a biter, he's a biter, he's a biter. Oh, he doesn't want to bite on camera, but no name. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I've looked at everything I've ever watched since I was a small child, and I remember being really little and looking up at the TV. Oh, he bit me! Wow! You gonna bite me now, you meanie? He's a meanie sometimes. Anyway, looking up at the TV like a small child, those big eyes, and that flashing screen, and looking at those stories, and those stories being so engaging, and, and I remember how hypnotic it was, and, and how exciting, and, and when I went back and I looked at the shows I used to watch, Kimba. Uh, Lion of the Jungle and Speed Racer. <coughs> ah, stop attacking me, Max. And Speed Racer and, and whatever other crap I watched as a kid. I, I've gone back, I've looked at all the 60s, 70s, and 80s shows, and I've looked in the subliminals and the backgrounds, and they all contain the same crap. Death, scary things, you know, bones, sex. Penis, masturbation, oral sex, anal sex, you know, all kinds of sex. Sex and death, sex and death, sex and death. Look at this guy. He's a beast. He's a beast. Okay, beastie, that's enough. That's enough, beastie. 
You gotta watch it with this cat because he's just like chase you around like a lion and <laughs> jump out at you. <laughs> See, he's following me. He's following me like a lion. Okay, beastie. Anyway, you know, and I went back and I looked at these shows and I looked at the stop attacking me. Yes. And I, I looked at the uh, the message. Look at he's sneaking up. He's gonna do it. Anyway, I looked at the message and it's it's horrible. You know, Kimba. Kimba's father was murdered by the by the, the his mother was killed and his father was murdered by the hunters and he sleeps in a in a in a, a nest of thorns and thickets with his dead father's pelt for warmth. And and he sleeps in the thicket so no one will attack him. No wonder I got a fucked up sense of home. No wonder I drew my, my home like a bunker on the hill. You know, the guy said when he did my thing, oh, it, it looked like a, an impenetrable fortress buried underground. I drew a picture of a fucking house on a hill with some trees and some grass. I don't know where he got that shit from, but, but really, he was right. You know, I've always been... <laughs> Home is a big issue for me. That's why they fuck with us. Home is a big issue for most people. There are those people who like to put a bag on their fucking back, and that's all they fucking need, and they're happy to go bingy, bingy, bing around the world, see everybody and see everything. But man, I got smacked so fucking hard so many times. All I want to do is like get in a little fucking tiny closet and close the fucking door and like not have anybody bother me. So I can live out my last little days with this fucking horrible Morgellons and uh, whatever else, the high frequency and all the other shit in peace. In peace, I mean, you know, screaming, crying, throwing up, you know, all that other shit. But no, you know, I guess that's not going to fucking happen. So maybe it's time. I, I, you know, I don't know. What the fuck do you do? When you suffer from panic attacks and anxiety attacks and you live in a city of 7, 12 million people, you know? Get your shit together and move out of the city. Yeah, I know. It's not that fucking easy. Never had a driver's license. <laughs> I have no income. I have food stamps. Soon I'll have nowhere to live if we don't find one. Um, my parents are... Well, my mother's an idiot. Doesn't give a shit about me. My father's pretty old and believes what my mother says, I don't know. And, uh, <laughs> you know, three years ago I would have done it. I would have to, right, I'm, boom, I was a different person three years ago. You know, these people whacked me so hard, my head is still spinning. That's why I make these stupid videos. And if it was over, if they would stop this stupid machine, if they would leave me alone, I could begin to heal, I could try to heal, but <laughs> they don't. They just keep smashing, smashing, smashing on God's creation. Come on guys, look at me. Look at us. Have mercy. You know, people are uh, Anyway, I'm babbling. It helps to get it out, even if nobody watches. Thank you. God bless you. I hope you're having a better day than I am. And I'm going to have a better day than I am. Now that I'm awake and I'm, you know, whatever. Uh, look at me, man. Look, what, it looks like somebody bashed my head in with a fucking baseball bat. More gallons. Welcome to the New World Order. Scottish Irish royalty. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Thanks for watching. God bless you.